Around 63 to 65 AD, Paul sits in a Roman prison dictating this epistle. Paul is writing to the Christians at Ephesus, a church he has had a long relationship with. Paul identifies himself as an apostle of Christ, not out of pride, but in order to make sure they know that he is a follower of Christ and not some other leader, and to make sure the focus is indeed on Jesus. He says that he is an apostle by the will of God. In other words, he didn't choose this life. God is making him do this. All Paul's epistles include the greeting, grace to you and peace. Some would say this is simply hello, but the grace of Jesus is how we are saved. Paul is writing to new Christians about this new plan of salvation in a world filled with false teaching and misconceptions. He is using every portion of his letter to teach Christian doctrine. This opening is more than a perfunctory pleasantry. It reminds Christians that because we believe in Jesus Christ, we have received the undeserved gift of eternal life. With our faith in Jesus, God has already blessed us with more than we can ever acknowledge. Paul says that we are to bless him for that. Paul is explaining Christian doctrine to a church that has already been well taught, but remember, there is no Bible at this time. Paul is documenting Christian doctrine for this church and for us. He wants us to remember that we are powerless. We do not choose God. God chooses us. Our election wasn't an afterthought. It was something God decided from the very beginning. God knew the nature of man from the beginning of time. He knew the plan of salvation because of that nature, and so he knew he was going to send his son to save us as a part of the plan of salvation from the very start. Paul wanted these Jewish converts who may think that they're special because of their ancestor Abraham. And he wanted us to know that from the very beginning, Jesus is the foundation of our election by God. God views us as righteous because of Jesus. He saw his son Christ take our place, satisfy the just claims God had against us, and it was on the basis of our love and faith in the sacrificial love and miracle of Jesus that he could and did choose us. By this, we are holy and without blame before God. It was God's will that we were chosen for salvation and sonship. In his love towards us, God predestined us to a new relationship with him, a relationship of adopted children. He chose us for himself to be in his family because of what Christ had done and our faith. We must praise God for this unmerited favor. Now, we must remember here that Christianity is in its infancy. There's only a small group of believers coming out of Judaism and some Gentiles. They're scattered. There's no written book like the Jewish tradition has. Jewish tradition required overt acts, sacrifices, hand washing, and rituals. Paul is explaining a religious paradigm shift here. Salvation is now based upon our faith in Jesus the Christ. Our redemption is through Jesus, not the works of righteousness. We could do nothing to merit God's grace. Jesus paid the price to set us free by giving his life for us and by dying the death that we deserved. And the evidence of his payment of our debt was the shedding of his precious blood. Now, let's remember that 
forgiveness and grace these concepts go together forgiveness is only offered to us by and because of the grace of God now what was formerly a mystery he has freely made known to us he's revealed his plan he has given us the ability to understand and to appreciate his grace for us in this epistle this letter we can see that Paul continues to be overwhelmed by the wonders of God's plan to unite both Jews and Gentiles into one people one family through the redemptive work of Christ he continues to praise God for uniting us all in one body in Christ Paul understands the radical nature of this Christian concept. All of this is preordained by God because he preordained the plan and he preordained our unity through Christ. Other faiths were built on acts of sacrifice and outward demonstrations. Christianity says the sacrifice of Jesus was sufficient. We must only believe in him for our redemption. Other faiths share common ethnicity and nationalities. Christianity took people from all backgrounds and built a family based upon our common faith in Jesus Christ, adopting us fully as members of the family. Our inheritance is secure. That's the lesson for this week. Have a great week. Bye.